Yo, yo, yo. Check. Yo, what's up? Are we recording? Yeah. Gang. Let's go live. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the 3 a.m. podcast. My name is DJ. My name is Charlie. My name is Sean. Today, we are testing streaming capabilities. It's episode 99. So... Please bear with the technical difficulties. We're trying to figure all of this out. Uh, The reason why we're testing is because next week, episode 100 will be going live for for everybody. Yep. So by then we'll have a lot more things hashed out from graphics to flow. And uh, yeah, exciting. Uh, We have young Kalima, big Kalima in the studio uh, producing all of this. So shouts out to him. And we have Dan, a longtime listener, a day one or probably, yes. uh, of the podcast. So he's in the room with us, hanging out. But uh, we yeah. only set, set, sent out invitations to like our closest family and friends. Uh, so you're not going to see like a ton of people in here, but everyone in in here is super important to us and has been a big support from the very beginning. So yeah. Thank all of you. Feel free, uh, send questions, send comments, make fun of us, whatever you want. Yeah. Let us know how it's going. Stay as long as you want, whatever. Short as you want. Uh, but yeah, by episode 100, we should have at least like two more people. At least two. So. <laughs> cool. Gang. Uh, how do we want to handle comments and questions? Kalima, if you see anything good, just let us know, okay? If you see anything yeah. really bad, let us know too. Okay? You see something? want to roast them. Say something. Yeah. <laughs> you have an update? You want to start? You go. All right. <coughs> All right. I wanted to start this episode. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to apologize. Okay. I've been stressing about this for, I don't know, five days now, ever since I posted it. <laughs> I don't know. How to, I don't know where to start. Okay. Some of you listeners might have seen a story on our Instagram where we, it looked like we had chart topped, topped the charts in the podcast world in in Spotify. And that was me thinking I was funny. So I'm good at Photoshop. I woke up, I had the thought, I was like, oh, that'll be funny. I'll put us in front of Joe Rogan and like the other biggest podcast in the world. And I'll just post it because obviously it will be fake and people will think it's funny. And I posted it. And then I like went about my day, made breakfast. I walked out, go to, went to the gym. It was the first thing you did. You woke up thinking. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is funny. Let's just do it. This is how my brain works. Uh, posted it. As I'm driving to the gym, my phone starts going, mm, 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 and people start messaging the IG. And everyone is like, oh, my gosh, congratulations. How is this possible? Oh, my. You guys did it. We did it. You deserve all of the praise. Good. And I was like, oh, no. Instantly, dude, my heart sinks. I am so stressed. I'm like, dude, I thought it was super clear this was a joke. I thought, you know. And then all of a sudden, our personal group chat, DJ goes, yo, what's this? And Sean goes, yeah, what the hell's going on? I'm like, oh, crap. So DJ hits me like privately. It's like, it's like when you get pregnant and like <laughs> you, you're the parents find out from like somebody else rather than yeah. straight from the source. Dude, oh my gosh. DJ hits me privately and he's like, bro, what are you going to do about it? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I feel so bad. Like legit, some of our nicest followers. No, even before that, we thought it was real. Yeah, you too. And I was like, uh, 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 it's a joke. Like I just made it. And, and you were that's like, when I was like, what are we going to do then? No. So I sat there and I had this dilemma and I was like, bro, you should come clean. You should just tell everyone be like, my bad. That was a dumb joke. And then I was like, nah, I got to double down. And I sold, I texted DJ. I was like, I'm doubling down, bro. <laughs> so I made two more posts. I put us at the top of a uh, true crime and I, I made up a whole new genre for Spotify, scary stories. Scary and I, stories. I put us winning every slot. And I was like, surely people will understand this as a joke. Nope. <laughs> Still, people were like, congrats, you did it. And I was like, God damn it. So then I was like, it's too late to take it down. Because like so many people have seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I that's when you c- called me and you're like, <laughs> I'm doubling down. What do you What do you think? And I was like, bro, that's hilarious. Keep doing it. Uh, yeah, Sean was a straight up instigator. He was like, do it. 
<laughs> it was too meta, dude. I know. You're too meta for us. You're too <laughs> you're too smart for our own good. I know. Um but thank you everyone out there who believed in us. <laughs> yeah, who no, thought that was possible. Thank you so much. And for the people who didn't believe that that was real, screw you, dude. <laughs> screw you. Cuz that could have been real. I'm just out here manifesting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> not one person messaged us saying that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dude, you're not supposed to say that part. I'm, I'm doubling down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just no, playing. but anyway, I sorry if I deceived you. Sorry if this hurts you, but thank you for believing. We're going to get there one day. He already manifested. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. I'm just telling the future. Yeah. Yeah. I do come in the double down. <laughs> way, way better than backing out. It's a, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's alpha move. <laughs> BDE, bro. Uh, guys, last episode or the episode before. I think we were talking about polygamists and we said, yo, how do they got all that money? Because here we are. Yeah, <laughs> here we are. Trying to figure out how we could get one house between the three of us. It's and, probably uh, just a single level, dude. Yeah, and polygamists got mansions out here. Yeah. So several of our listeners hit us up. And what, did you see any of those? No, I didn't. Cool. I saw the beginning of one. I saw somebody read it, so I just let, let it go. Hey, yo. Okay, I knew cool. you'd bring it up. Uh, I'm not going to shout them out by name because I don't know if they want to be named. Um but one of them is like, yo, I work in a town that has pretty much one bank and they all bank at my bank. And she's like, so I see how they like, they have so many loopholes, apparently. She was like, in my town, I'm pretty sure there's like three or four husbands what? and like 30 wives split hmm. between all of them. And what they do is the wives open up a bank account and they put like $30 in, uh -huh. which then makes them eligible to like request every government like the handout they can right then the husband they do things like uh they always keep their house under construction because it's like a huge tax write-off so mm -hmm. are they married legally i have no idea or is it bro i don't know i don't know if you know <laughs> written in the stars if you're a polyglot out there let us know bro polyglot. yeah someone in chat let us know <laughs> uh but no and then uh, she named a ton, and she was like, they all do it. They have, like, these. And I'm not, I'm not saying this group of people or whatever, whatever, but that's what she said. <laughs> and then another one of our listeners hit us up, and she said, because we were talking about specific houses near where we record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, uh, it's pretty crazy how close I live to you guys. Um, I grew up in that community. Wow. So she was in one of those families. Wow. She said a lot of the wealth comes from they all work in construction. By the way, is she no longer part of it? At the very end, she said, I would like to say I am no longer in that community, <laughs> just to let you know. Not that, like, I care, whatever. I'm down with polygamists listening. Yeah, yeah, to each their own. <laughs> yeah. But she said they all are in construction, and they own really big construction companies, and they all work there, so it's, like, family-owned, and they just ball in because Utah's blown up right now. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Along with all the loopholes. So... <laughs> We got to figure out. Keeping stuff under construction. There you go. I need to only have $30 in my bank account. Yeah. I'll open another one. <laughs> I don't know. But it was cool just to like, we posed a question kind of offhand. And then like mad listeners were like, actually, dig, dig, dig. And they, you know, told us how it actually is. Yeah. So I appreciated that. Is there a documentary looking like following the life of like polygamists? I don't know. There was a TLC show. Really? Yeah. I'm intrigued. They would be the ones to do it. And it's really weird because they're like they film them going down the highway and it's like right over there. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, dude? it's weird. I only watched a couple episodes and it was kind of ridiculous. I didn't understand it. <laughs> it Not, didn't blow up. I never heard of the show. It, I mean, it was pretty big at one point. Is Clima this a fiction or like a? No, it's a documentary. Oh, like like documentary. they're following a real. I thought you were talking about like Big Love. No, I was like, I don't think that's real, bro. <laughs> Aaron in the chat says they are legally married to only one wife. It's a symbolic marriage within the others. That's what I thought. Uh, That's what I thought. So it's in Aaron. the stars. Loopholes. It's in the stars. So they're not actually married to multiple. I know there's like a hierarchy. There's like a main thought. No, I'm just kidding. There's like a main <laughs> woman. And then what the are they called? Sister wives? Piece. No, they're called yeah, side yeah. pieces. Sister wives, bro. <laughs> That's how it works. Dude, how do you draw that family tree? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <Dumb. laughs> They probably broke the internet on like uh what's it called? Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com. Yeah. They were just like, no mods. No. <laughs> Server like error. Yeah. Quantum computing yeah. can't figure this shit out. That's so funny. What the hell is this human shit? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, that's hilarious. That's insane. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. I need to watch that. That'd be entertaining. <laughs> I think we could just walk down the road. <laughs> Knock on some doors, bro. We could bring one in here. 
Dude, yeah, let's get them on the pod. Shit on their life. Wow. <laughs> the, I think the doc you're talking about from chat, they said Sister Wives is the one. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I know someone who got pretty deep into it, and they were like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Like, it kind of sounds cool. <laughs> into, into the documentary or polygamy? <laughs> documentary. Oh. And polygamy? almost polygamy. Yeah, yeah. bro. They're like, I don't know. That shit kind of sounds cool. It does, bro. It's like you grow up in this tight community, and it's like y'all got each other's backs, and it's like. Funny. Yeah, they all got each other's yeah. backs, dude. <laughs> the one guy got everybody's backs. Yeah, dude. <laughs> bro, That's it's so, so funny. Fair. On the show, they're mad candid. So it's like he he like sleeps with this one, stays in their house from like Monday to Wednesday, and then moves and like stays what? with this one from like Wednesday to Friday. What the yeah. In the same house, though, because it's so big. It's like eight houses in yeah, one. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, like an like apartment floors. building. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. I, yeah. If you drive through, you'll see every huge house has like 15 cars in their parking lot. And it's under construction. They, they, have a, they don't have a driveway. They have a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> but, wow. Insane. Yeah. Um, Did the Olympics start this week? Ooh, Summer Olympics? Bro, by the time this episode comes out, which is in a couple weeks because of scheduling, yeah, it'll come out that week. So we're a few weeks early, but... Yeah, Olympic starts this week. Have you been watching any of the like the trials? A little bit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, insane, not dude. at all. <laughs> uh, world records like are already being broken. Dude, yeah, some chick broke the four hundred meter hurdle. Hurdle. Yeah. Like world record in the tri like trials. It's because it's no one had anything else to do for the last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's train, bro. What did everyone else do? Getting better? I'm like, just. <laughs> downhill the last year and a half regressing yeah um have you seen comparison videos of the olympics from like 80 years ago or whatever like well, gymnastics from 50 years ago mm -hmm. to now yeah they were like this was a perfect 10 score <laughs> in 1940 it's like every kid at a like a trampoline it's like park. a somersault yeah. i was watching i was like dude i hit moves like that when i was 10 yeah I as soon as soldier spins. boy came on on the dance floor i was doing the exact same moves yeah. it's insane <laughs> it is insane it's crazy how much has progressed but it's like in 50 years is it going to progress even more, or do you feel like we're close to the cap of, like, uh, physical human performance? That's a good question. Because it's like, we're never going to see somebody run, like, a four-second hundred meter. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know either. It's, I know what you're that's saying. That's not going to happen. I feel like there is a ceiling. Yeah, but what if? And then genetics will have to hear come me out. It. Like everyone starts becoming androids, and then the games continue, and the records get better, but because we're better, and this is fifty years in the future, so I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. But I kind of, I always, we've talked about it before, but I would love for them to have like two separate uh, meets going on at the same time, and it's like one where everything is allowed, genetic modification, oh, okay. oh yeah, steroid juice the tits, and then like. Straight Normal just human. People. Yeah. <laughs> and then you could like see like the crazy ass game right by the regular game. Yeah. So that's how we, that's how the Olympics progresses in the future is through. I mean, it, potentially, I don't, know. Oh, I don't know. They just like, like they didn't cancel, but I think someone's not going because they get tested for marijuana. Oh my gosh. And it was that one girl who just destroyed the, uh, not the hurdles. It was, uh, it was like a. Shakari? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what her event was, but I think she tested positive for marijuana, and they're like, nope. What? I saw this literally 10 minutes ago. Really? So it's that very sucks. new. This is the breaking newest. News. Breaking news. It's crazy. She, uh, <laughs> have, have you not seen that? Mm -mm. She has, like, crazy orange-blue colored hair. Her nails are long, dude. They're she looked fabulous when she was running is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, she's running? Yeah. Yeah. 100 meter, and she smoked everyone. Maybe that's like Smoke enhancing, everyone. like yeah. cutting through the air or something. <laughs> the nails, dude, yeah. like when you're a kid and you put the <laughs> flip flops on your hands, it's like double your speed. Was oh, that just a Hawaii thing? Yeah. Don't act, dude. <laughs> you're swimming you through the air? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Those are the boosters as kids. It's you take so off your, take off your, we call them slippers. Take off your slippers, put them on your hands. <sighs> dude. Bro, I ain't never done that in my life. <laughs> It's so humid in Hawaii that actually helps because you're like pushing through the air. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> Just I as think, dumb as wearing flip-flops no, on No, <laughs> absolutely not. I think uh, it's going to take a long time till we can get like people with mechanical legs running, I feel like. So in the meantime. I don't know, bro. Boston. Boston mechanics? Yeah, bro. I think what we should do is instead of countries, uh, compete by race. 
that's kind of what it is. Like except for all the first world countries, <laughs> yeah. except for like America, Canada. Uh, that's what it started out as. So you want to like go back? Into <laughs> <what it was. laughs> see, yeah. I want to see who's the superior race, dude. dude. By race. Ah. Um, and what's the your loser, favorite race? The losing. <laughs> I was gonna say what does Mine's the loser the race? race. The, <laughs> the human race. Oh. What does the losing race get? Eliminated. <laughs> Like Cut actual, from the like, island, like genocide eliminated. Yeah, <laughs> oh, dude, it could be nice. <laughs> just like, just send them to Australia or something. Yeah. Dude. Send them out to space. Oh, that'd be funny, dude. We could do that. Yeah, and then <laughs> that'd be lit. That'd be the first prize. Yeah. <laughs> what race is good at what? Like what? Like what? What event? What event does like the Taiwanese be oh, okay? They're not. A, they're not over. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Speaking like of not races, the not Russians bad. have won this event for 50 years. Well, it I used mean, to be hockey, dude. And then Miracle on Ice. You're right. That's a good one. It's always going like back and forth. Like at one point, they were really, uh, the Russians were super good at um, like everything until they got in trouble for <laughs> doping. <laughs> for doping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I know the Chinese are mad good at like weightlifting. Are they? Aren't they? I don't Bro, know, I dude, don't know. I, why I am I talking like, about this? I don't watch. I, I would think like Pakistan and like Dagestan is super good at wrestling, but I'm pretty sure they cut wrestling, right? Which did, is weird because that's one of the first one of the oh, like original yes. Olympic game. Yeah, event? no, dude, it's too violent now, bro. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Any good fun things from chat, bro? We got a ton. Oh, uh, let's uh, go. Uh, first off, they want to know if uh, Sean is drinking Guinness. Sean. Of course, I'm drinking Guinness. Bloody Guinness. Pass the Guinness. Um, we shared germs. <laughs> BH also talked about how uh, Neuralink will change things. Oh, I yeah. So, it's un- so unlocking, open-ended. Unlocking different parts of our brain will change our physical capabilities? The Olympics, yeah. Interesting. Wait, don't Olympics get a... Aren't they... Not, maybe not sponsored, but we'll say sponsored... But like every condom company in the world, it's like all the humans at peak physical performance, they're I all. I don't know if they're sponsoring, but I do know that like the Olympic Village. Like the Olympics are like the number one consumer of condoms. Yeah, because they all be boning. Because they're all like gods and goddesses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they be boning. Here we have the, uh, the uh, curling people just like <laughs> trying it. Curling up in a ball and going to sleep. Alone. That's why they yeah. try and actually make the Olympics, bro. <laughs> they go to bed at regular bedtimes. Yeah. All Let's. right. Allow me to go down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Does it involve race? Yes. Which race? Yours. Oh, or. My favorite one. The one you're pretending to be. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Birds. So I, I texted the boys. The bird race. Was it last night? Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I was balls deep in this conspiracy theory about how Hawaii is not real. Where'd you find this? Reddit? <laughs> you found this on Reddit? No. Uh, from another podcast. It goes back. Okay, this is going to sound like the ramblings of a madman, but whatever. Who cares? We'll cut it if it's not good. You two are aware of the Bohemian Grove. Yes, sir. Have you ever heard of that, Kalima? No. Okay. Oh, man. Dan's <laughs> nodding his head. He's heard it. Okay, well, he knows. We'll educate you. Okay, so I'm going to give you the most surface level rundown of this. The Bohemian Grove is basically a brotherhood or group that formed, I believe, by Mark Twain way back in California, way back in the day. At this time, most of the world's wealth, or at least the United States, was like in the 1%. So like a very small group of people controlled basically all of the U.S., So they made this group. It started off as like an elite boys club. And then it soon morphed into this wild where like leaders of the world were coming to it. And they were doing rituals to Moloch, the owl god. And they were simulating sacrificing like a virgin. So like Reagan's there. uh, People from Silicon Valley are there. Their influence has infiltrated like big tech. It's it's everywhere. Anyone in power. Yes, it's huge. It's crazy. And it's like super verifi- verifiable. You can look it up. They have pictures of it. Okay. In the beginning, it was an all boys club. And at some point, the niece of Joseph Smith, 
I haven't verified any of this. I just heard it <laughs> once and I'm retelling it like it's fact. So there you go. The niece of Joseph Smith, after Joseph Smith dies, leaves the Mormon church and joins up with the Bohemian Grove and becomes the first female member. And at that time, they were like, we're not down with females. <laughs> so obviously, like she did something or gave something of value where they're like, okay, you're in. And she became known as the Bohemian Grove Librarian, where she put together a library of forbidden knowledge and secrets that only the elite and only the top of the Bohemian Grove were allowed to look into. Sourcing from where? All everywhere. Joseph all around Smith, the world. She claimed Joseph Smith himself from all around the world. Ancient scholars. Like Apparently, the, the lost his, manuscripts are there. The history of like Atlantis is in there and stuff like that. Library like, of the Alexandria. Of Egypt yeah. are in there. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all these accumulated works like of forgotten or hidden knowledge. That's lit. And she's in charge. Literature. <laughs> That's, yeah, lit. <laughs> Bro. Uh, okay. And supposedly, there's plays that are performed at the Bohemian Grove for the elites that tell the history of the world. And one of these plays is called Aloha Oi. And it's the secret history of Hawaii. And so the, in this play, they reenact where Hawaii came from. And where it came from was back in like the 40s or 30s or 20s or 10s. I don't know. <laughs> Hell long ago. The elites were like, we need to control um, the trade between here and Asia, China specifically. So we need to set up a fake country that we control in the Pacific Islands. So they went around the Pacific Islands, got groups of people, put them on Hawaii, which was uninhabited or not like a thriving nation, said, you guys are the, you guys are the, what's it called? Like royalty and put them in charge. And Aloha Oi actually comes from an old Nordic song. So there's an old Nordic song that has the same tune and a lot of the same words. And they said, we will prop Hawaii up as being the dream of the middle class of the U.S. Everyone will want to go there and we'll own it. We'll control it. <laughs> Dude, that's true. <laughs> and I was thinking like. That bit, at least. The whole re-education of Hawaii and how like you almost lost your culture and stuff like that. That's insane. You know, growing <laughs> up in Hawaii, uh, we didn't grow up with uh, like most of our parents were into like classic rock, like a lot of. I assume your parents were into. So a lot of rocks, classic. What were rock they doing with rocks? Music, oh. <laughs> dumbass. Uh, yeah. So I I couldn't before I moved here. I don't think I could name you one Beatles song. I don't think I could name you a a Journey song or Chicago Eagles. Any of that. Hmm. Um, we all listen to like traditional Hawaiian music, and I didn't learn until I moved here that. So many of the songs from their discographies were just covers. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow, <laughs> brown eyed girl. You heard that over here, and you're like, they stole that yeah, from this. Bro. That. So we'd be stealing songs from everyone. <laughs> bro, it still happens. It still does. I, I'll hear a song on the radio. I'm like, oh my god, I thought this was Hawaiian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you guys are supporting the theory. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying dude it makes it's coming together it makes sense there's more about it it was like do tell okay <laughs> okay don't it, hold back it was talking about you know like the culture of surfing mm. that actually comes from lumberjacks in northern california with the logs dude so yeah they would move that's logs crazy. in northern california down the rivers and lumberjacks would hop on big logs and they would ride them standing up and that's where surfing started so the poly stood on the logs and because we're so big we made them flat Oh, damn, dude. Yeah. Dude, keep going. <laughs> Give me some more, dude. I was also thinking, you know how you have the legend of no one knows where the bones of the ancestors are because they yeah. don't tell anyone. Maybe yeah. it's because they're not actually there. It's just a legend. Yeah, they're like, oh, don't go looking for the king and queen of Hawaii's bones because you can't find them. It's because they were not there. Bro, this is sounding like pretty legit to me. <laughs> Bro, I was convinced. I was sitting there like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Why, dude? <laughs> yeah, X-Files. Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii, dude. <laughs> oh, <my>. Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Anyway, who knows? Bro, that is some rabbit hole. <laughs> Coming to. 
I, I don't know. A I'm big look, coming too right now. <laughs> I'm gonna look into it a little more. I'm gonna rail on my grandma, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Feeding me all of this growing up. Yeah, why'd you teach me that? That's BS. <laughs> anyway, that's me, dude. That's me half my life. Dude, I like that. <laughs> uh, anything else from chat? Yeah, any updates from chat from my Hawaii? <laughs> Kamalani says, here's a thought. Who did Charles' ancestors bomb? Ah! <laughs> no, I got bombed, dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Um, should we start? Let's roll. Yeah, let's roll, guys. Now we roll our 20-sided die. Determine who goes first. Highest goes first. I think you moved my dice, bro. 13, 11, 3. So the order is Sean, DJ Charlie. Yeah. Word. All right, guys. Got a couple good ones for us tonight. First one comes from a listener, and I called it It Comes at Night. This is probably not what he wanted it to be called, but it was I was like, ooh, this is kind of good, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna just roll, run with this. Sean taking the liberties, dude. <laughs> Bastard eyes. <laughs> so the listener's name is Miles. And he said, it's kind of funny how we've talked about this topic a little bit in the past, and it's hallucinating at night, a.k.a. mainly Charles when he's in an Airbnb and sees a camera come out of the smoke detector type situation. Is this different from dreaming? Um, well, Charles, can you or we're gonna elaborate? Find out. Well, uh, at mine least for we're... sure is because you are awake. Oh, you're talking about like when you're groggy and you wake up, open up your eyes, you and... see something happen. Like I know you're saying it like that, but I swear it's more than that because I literally I sit up in my bed and I'm staring and I'm seeing it, and it's a good thirty seconds where I'm like trying to like adjust and I'm staring at. It. So I'm, I'm not like, oh, 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 it's gone. It's you're like, like I'm sitting there trying like... to focus and like figure out what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Like, what the, what the, <laughs> and as far as you can tell, it's different than dreaming, right? 100%. Okay. So that's where he's going with this. He, he said he wanted to start a little bit easy. So childhood experience. When he was about 12 years old, he and it's kind of like a family reunion type situation. They go down to Myrtle Beach. And, Florida? Yeah. They go down there and they're staying in this, this house, I assume, and there's a bunch of his cousins, age 12 to 19, and they're all in this room that has like these bunk beds that kind of stack up in the room. And he gets the top bunk bed, and it's like eight to 10 inches off of the ceiling. So it's up there and right next to the ceiling fan. <laughs> so not ideal. Deaf. So he goes to bed pretty easy and wakes up around 2 a.m. And when he wakes up, he swears that he sees spiders, giant tarantulas the size of, like, exercise balls coming out of the ceiling fan. And as he's looking at it, trying to figure out what's going on, the spiders see that he's awake. And they start crawling across the top of the ceiling to come towards him. And he, in his fight or flight, just decides to go flight and jumps from the top shelf of the top bunk bed through the ceiling fan blades oh. as it's going. He says he landed with a crash like a grenade had just hit the floor. And he runs to the door. He looks back up around, and there's nothing there. So he didn't say if he went back to sleep after that, but I assume he may, maybe didn't initially go back up to the bed because, you know, spiders. So that's kind of just a little, a little teaser for you. Mm -hmm. But a few years later, he and his friend are moving out of their places and they're trying to get their own place together just for, you know, some freedom, apparently, and just do their own thing. So they find a pretty dope spot and they start moving in. He says they started moving in, even though like the internet wasn't going to be in for like a couple days. And I feel like I've been there before. What the hell like, do you do? You and me at a... King Henry. King Henry, that's what it was. Was the power on? I think that we didn't have power because we would go and sit by the clubhouse where the Wi-Fi was to charge our phones. Yeah, Sean and I had no power for like four days when we moved into our apartment. So it's kind of this situation right here. <laughs> so they eventually decide to move in even though there's like no Wi-Fi or, 
or internet for a couple of days. Is this Florida or Australia? Uh, dude, it might be Australia. No, I know spiders. it sounds like it's in the south somewhere, but essentially he gets everything in, he gets his bed into his room and everything and decides to go to sleep one night. Once again, wakes up middle of the night and strangely he sees a shadow standing at the foot of his bed, staring at him. And Miles says he's more annoyed than anything else. And he kind of just, he says that he whispers, that's annoying as f <laughs> and goes back to bed. <laughs> just rolls back over and goes to sleep. So That makes sense. I've been in that situation. I know what you're talking about with seeing things. Okay, yeah. I've yeah. been so tired sometimes, though. I don't care. <laughs> Take <It's> like, me. <laughs> or just leave me alone. <laughs> just roll over. Just, I'm done. I'm sleeping. Or like when you're in your room and you see your pile of clothes in the corner and it's a demon, like at night, it's that kind of situation. So he uh, just rolls over, goes back to sleep. Nothing happens that night, but he said that over the course of the next couple of weeks and months or however long, they would have small experiences, like seeing things in their peripherals, like small figures darting around corners or a tall figure standing in their room, stuff like this. So it all just kind of is adding up. Hmm. He said that he even decided to never leave his door open because when he'd be sitting at his desk, like working or whatever, he felt like something would be standing on the other side of the cracked door looking at him. So not okay with that, decided to close his door all the time. So eventually over the course of staying in this house, Miles, he uh, gets a girlfriend and she's very into like crystals and, you know, the spirituality and stuff like that. And they just kind of click right off the bat, like fast friends. And eventually she gets the invite back to his place. She's going to stay the night. They're just chilling, cuddling. And he's a straightforward dude. So he basically just comes at her. He's like, I don't know if this is going to sound weird, but I would like intercourse in the past. In the past, I've uh, had night terrors and sleepwalking. Like you probably won't like, see that but i just wanted to like let you know that that could be a thing that's pretty considerate yeah just like let them know up front right so he tells her this and she didn't really have issues with it like she seemed to be okay with it he's in the back of his mind thinking okay whew, i got it out in the open so there's no way this could happen tonight so they go to bed that night and he wakes up middle of the night around 2 40 and he says he sees above him a grand piano just on the ceiling above him in the air. And he's trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So he kind of like reaches up to like touch it and then like lays back in bed and goes to sleep. Super weird. And he said over the course of the next more weeks and months, like these types of things would happen. He said even one time his girlfriend would tell him in the morning like, Last night you stood up in bed and you like asked me, do you see them? And she was like, see who? And he would be like, the toddlers coming across the lawn from the neighbor's house. <laughs> no joke. And like these kinds of things keep happening to him. So, and it doesn't really like have any effect on them though. One night though, he, has, he knows he has to wake up super early in the morning, I think, for work. So they decide that she's going to stay at her place instead of come over because that's just going to be a problem for both of them. They're not going to be able to go to sleep on time. Hmm. So he says he goes to bed pretty quick. However, he wakes up in the middle of the night. And he sleeps on his right. But he says he feels a little uncomfortable this night and so decides to roll over onto his back. And he's looking up at the ceiling and out of the corner of his eye, out of his peripheral, he sees something that makes his blood run cold. He sees something staring at him from his left side. Now, terrified, he decides to meet the gaze of whatever's looking at him. So he kind of leans his head over, and it's the most terrifying thing that it could possibly have been for him. His girlfriend is laying there in bed, eyes wide, staring at him with this wicked grin on her face. And at this time, at this point, 
he's just so upset that whatever it is is using his own love life against him. Mm -hmm. He like swings over and just smashes the bed. Oh, dude. I think it's like he's about to domestic abuse. (laughs) Now, when his fist hits just the sheets, he's like, I don't know what it is. Uh, He tries to go back to bed that night and he decides, or he's kind of like deciding if he should tell his girlfriend the next day, like what happened. Eventually he does decide to tell her and she's like, maybe we just better sage the room or something or do something along those lines. He said that after saging the room, he hasn't had night terrors to that extent again. But that was the most terrifying thing that's happened to him. And this has been within the last year, I believe. Oh, snap. So something that may be ongoing, but from that most terrifying point, hasn't gotten any worse. Huh. So that's Miles' experiences over the course of weeks to years, I believe, with this phenomenon that I haven't personally experienced. But sounds terrifying. Hmm. I don't think anything, uh, at least paranormal, has pushed me to the point where I'm fighting. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like for me, my first reaction is to fight. Because, like, you remember we were in the cabin and somebody's like, "You see, is someone watching us through the window?" Sean I got jumped so up mad. and sprinted out the back door. I just saw a ghost, and Sean's like, "Where is it? I'm gonna fight this <laughs> yeah. thing, bro." I was like, bro, chill. <laughs> no, You're nothing's messing us. with me, bro. <laughs> Uh, what do you guys think that is? Because a part of me, I, and this is coming from someone who I feel like I experienced something similar. Mm -hmm. Is it your mind? Is it something paranormal? Is it like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it's Truman Show. I think everyone's in on it. Freak. Bro, why are you going to say that to me? (laughs) Freak you. (laughs) I mean, it could be that. It could be glitches in the Matrix. Just spiders coming out of the fan. Do you classify that as paranormal? I mean, I kind of do. I think you could like, it's not normal. It's got to be paranormal. <laughs> I don't know. Abnormal. Shit. I don't know. If, uh, if I had to explain it, I would kind of say it is like your brain processing and shutting down and maybe like getting locked into dreaming, but then like waking up and not snapping out of it quick enough or something like that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it seems like I've had situations where it's like, I didn't come up with that. I would never think of that. Like the the time I looked up in my closet and two feet slowly came down and just stood on the oh, yeah. top shelf of my closet. And I was like, nope. this is the scariest thing. I wouldn't think of that in my waking hour. So why is my sleep? That wasn't brain even the scariest dick? thing that you told to me. That's the one incredible. that you said that was scariest to me was the face. But that one I could conceive. I mean, I don't I couldn't conceive that, bro. If something was poking his head around the corner at that level. Yeah. You're about to swing on one. Bro, I'm gonna oh. kick the sh out of that. Have you ever punched anyone? Have I ever punched anyone? Yeah. No. No? No, dude. You haven't? Never. Not once. Have you punched somebody? I got into a couple fights, but they were all before the grade of five. <laughs> what was the most memorable one? Sorry, did you have anything else uh, on this? Sh- lit from the story? From Miles? No, that's that's it for Miles. Miles, that's lit. I hope uh, you're okay. Same. <laughs> but it's happens. a good story. Hopefully if you, get more, happens. If you yeah. get more information or... Stories, let us know. That's not so we can exploit you. Before the <laughs> fight, is there anything from chat? No, no, yet. Oh, lame. <laughs> Shout out my sister in chat, Brittany. Shout out Tone Mob if he's still here. Shout out Kevin is in chat. Brother Aaron. I don't know who else is in here, so those are all the people I saw. <laughs> Lots, yeah. We got Alicia Mitchell. Oh. She said, this better be good, Sean. So. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's funny. That's a cousin. Shout out cousin. Kamalani posted an explanation. Oh, snap. He said, dreams are made from your eyes flickering really quickly, creating images to which your mind fills and creates, maybe as you're waking up. Oh, interesting. Whoa, so maybe there's like a, a period where my... Between wakefulness Is and that sleep, called REM? Kind of like... Rapid eye movement? That kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like factual or is he just like, just saying that? I don't know, but I Let believed it 100%. I mean, I was about ready to believe it too. <laughs> uh, cool. Fights. The most memorable one. I have two. One, we were playing football, and how we played football at Viva Blunt was we all <laughs> lined up in front of each other, and someone said, hut, hut, hike, and then you just stood up and started swinging. <laughs> That's how we played football. Just gridiron gang and someone ass. just ran through. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been in a ton. One of them culminated in a dude choking me on the ground, and I said, you're not hurting me. You're not hurting me, and I blacked out. That's like me and my mom. 
<laughs> when she's Whoa. trying to spank you or something? No, choking When she's me. choking you? No, like, no, that doesn't hurt. Ha <laughs> ha. No. Um, have like, you, safe word, safe word. Yeah. <laughs> have you punched somebody, though? Yes. This one kid wouldn't let my Jewish friend sit down on the bus. And he called him a Jewish slur. Oh, dude. And I was like. That's noble of you. Standing up for them. Dude, I was the original Justice what does the kid Warrior, look like? bro. <laughs> This just white hair, blonde hair, and blue eyes. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. He could have been Mexican or something. He was a little. He was beige. He looked like a mix of a couple <laughs> things. I don't think I've ever heard that color used for a skin tone. But he was wearing. Okay, this might have been a cheap shot. So whatever. I was in fourth grade. He was wearing like a stretchy necklace, and I was like, "Bro, you need to get up." And he's like, "No." And he's like, "F your friend." And he called stretchy him a necklace. necklace like it was elastic. Uh, elastic. Yeah, like you could pull it. And stretch it. Were there things on it? Yeah, it had like little pukas on it, basically. Okay. Like okay. a puka shell neck. So I was like, it kind of got a oh. little physical. I think he pushed my front homie, my David Star homie. So I was like, that's it. And I grabbed his necklace and I pulled it as hard as I could. So it like drug his neck with him. And then I went, <laughs> boom, like that, right back <laughs> into his him face. Right into the face. And then he stood Where? Up. Right in the middle? The I probably hit him around here. Okay. okay like the cheek okay. area? Yeah. What did he do? How did he react? Oh, he just stood up and we started swinging. And then, oh, the, nice. and then, 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 then we the got split driver. up. Bus driver grabbed us, took us to the principal's office, called my dad. I cried. I'm like, I'm so sorry. My dad's like, it's all, it's all whatever. <laughs> who, who do you think won the fight? If you had to say. If I were like spectating, I would say, you know, I definitely landed a solid after that. It was a flurry. So on points, I think on I won. Points, yeah, because I made the most solid yeah, connection. Yeah, yeah. 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 Did it hurt your hand? I mean, I was like in fifth grade, so I was like, how much force can you generate? Probably not a lot. I understand, though, when you actually hit something, it Fs your hand up. Like, yeah. it breaks your hand. Do you ever bully anyone? I bullied a bully. He called, dude, what the heck? I'm not trying to, like, <laughs> posit, posit myself as some, like, de defender of ethnic Who'd you bully, dude? Bro, his name Maybe was... Maybe he had a terrible family life. Anthony. He probably did, but he said the N-word towards a, a kid. Uh, and dude. he also pushed a girl when we were playing Foursquare. Oh, and so we hella people. bullied him to the point where he stopped bullying forever. Because wow. we, like, that three of us ganged up on him and just, like, went hard on his ass. Mischief, I can be mean. <laughs> mischief managed. Yeah, bro. for real, though. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever bully anyone? No, dude. Jordan? No, dude. Did you ever bully <laughs> that was, anyone? That was friendly, you know, like. No one bullied each other at school? Did you? No, nah, not school? at school, dude. Or a school bully? Like, we were all siblings. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> all those questions you asked me to you. No. <laughs> I'm asking the questions here. Okay, did I bully someone? Yeah. I don't know. No. <laughs> I didn't. I never bullied anyone. That's too damn soft to bully anybody. Aww. Um, does making a teacher cry count? Oh, dude. If I go to hell, I know why. What's... Uh, what's <laughs> Fourth grade. Sorry, Miss Lopez. Sorry. What's the difference between <laughs> bullying and subordination? Uh, uh, the difference is you need age? to you need to tell me the definition of the second word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they threw that uh, word around all the time. If in you're subordination. Just in, uh, insubordination. Subordination. Insubordination. Yeah, it's, it's, in Hawaii? Yeah. That seems like a heavy word to like, us, throw huh? it. It probably yeah. came from yeah. California, if you like being honest, yeah. like, when they took over. Yeah, it came from Northern California, that word. No. <laughs> from Would Bohemian you? Grove. Yeah. So she they just said, y'all are being insubordinate. <laughs> I think they, maybe I heard it a lot because I didn't know what it meant in elementary. I was like, what's that? You know? we're, we're being that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe it was just insubordination. Maybe my teacher cry. That's I, it. I Did mean, you ever punch anyone? Yes. Who? Oh. What was her name? <laughs> <laughs> grandma. <laughs> um, no, I was defending my grandma. What? Yeah. It was middle school. I think it was in the front of my house. Also, this is all alleged. <laughs> um, no, I'll own up to it. Uh, no, my grandma got home one day. She had groceries. She does this whistle. She goes, <laughs> when I hear that, I know grandma is outside. She needs help with something. Always carrying stuff and treats, whatever. Cinnabon. <laughs> uh, nice. DJ's like. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> the Cinnabon whistle. <laughs> so I hobble down there <laughs> to the front yard. <laughs> um, by that point, my grandma was already yelling. I'm like, what?
what is she doing? Is she being angry at me? Am I, did I eat too many Cinnabons? Am I, <laughs> am I too slow to this? She wasn't the only voice that I heard. I heard another voice, the boy next door, who's my age, yelling at her. I don't know what it was, but all I heard was lazy Hawaiians <laughs> <laughs> hurled at my grandma. Is that a common racial stereotype of Hawaiians? Very. Interesting. Very. Uh, I just told Kevin that the number one killer in Hawaii is diabetes. So Cinnabon. And he was like, yeah, he was like surprised. <laughs> I'm like, you're surprised that that's the number one killer? And you should have told um, him the number one cause of death is actually birth. You're dumb. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that correlates laziness, diabetes, maybe. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I push, I, I push, I, I punch the kid straight. I'd even ask. On it was sight, a, dude. It was a sucker punch. Let's go. It's the only time I punch somebody. If you yell at I grandma, think. you deserve to get sucker punched. Yeah, yeah. I Especially so, when she got the Cinnabon for you. I know. <laughs> We do need to get in more fights, though. Like I'm too old. No, dude, I'm in. <laughs> I feel like as I get older, I need to fight more. I was very down. I was very hot-headed when I first moved to Utah. I was Bro, you ready remember that to go one time? Constantly. We're driving out of like Hobble Creek Canyon. Oh. I'm driving, and somebody says something, and you both wanted to turn around. Because like, nope, we said, hey, going. what's up? And they went, hey. And then they went, N-word. Oh, yeah. Oh. Screamed the N-word. And DJ yes. and me were like. Turn we were, around. Yeah, I was we like, were Sean, pissed. stop the car. And Sean was just like, it's not worth it, guys. It's not <laughs> worth it. No, no, no. I'm not even making fun of you. I'm you not were making fun of you, too. You were, were doing just, the right thing. Sean I'm was laughing like, it's at not worth it. It's not worth it. Like, they won't learn their lesson. It's not worth it. And we DJ were, and I are like, turn the car. <laughs> Dude, we were fired yeah. up. Peace. We were charged. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they were like we were some living. scrawny 16-year-olds. I was like, I will fight all of them at once. It would be hilarious. Yeah. Oh. And we tried to make it moral too by justifying. Life. We need to teach him, Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to teach him because we're we're like we could have we could have been guys with guns, yeah. you know. I do. Remember we could pulled that. up yep. on them with 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 that. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was our justification. in retrospect, we should have gone back. Oh my! You, no, I'm just kidding. Did you fight any of your siblings? Like actual fight? Uh, I don't recall, but I remember in our family group chat, like a few <laughs> weeks or months ago, one of my siblings sent like a journal entry. And it said that Sean fought me. And I was like, bro, I don't recall this. You must have got knocked out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. It was, I was red with anger. It's like when you ask someone who, if they would win in a street fight, like 1% of the people who say yes are trained fighters. The other 99% are just like, yo, when I fight, like it goes red and bodies hit the ground. <laughs> like that's, that's me, bro. <laughs> Your family's close. We're we pretty close. You're sharing journal entries. Dude, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't share my journal entries. Those things can go to hell. But yeah. Everyone else is on fine with. I think I burned one of my journals. <laughs> Just too ashamed of your life? Yeah. Like, I can't believe I thought these thoughts. <laughs> Get away from me. That's funny. No, interesting. Were you going anywhere with the fight? or I just want to make sure you weren't making oh, a Oh, me? Point. Yeah. No. Interesting. Just nowhere. <laughs> well, Just we're about curious. to fight. Yeah. Just curious. <laughs> <sighs> I feel like I just fought. Yeah. A little bit. Feeling exhausted. Uh, Miles? Miles. That's it from Miles. Cool. Okay. Did you have one more? Yes. So I do have one more story. This one will go to just our patrons. Most of you here in chat are already patrons. So I'm not going to lead you on <laughs> and then drop a cliffhanger for you. So my patron story this week also comes from a listener. And this listener did want to remain anonymous, but they grew up, at least for a part of their life, living in the UK, in England. Thank you. Cool. Anything from chat? Anything noteworthy or fun? No, nothing new. Wow, guys. This is lame chat. Is it still like, uh, if you guys can answer, how does it sound? How does it look? Does it, is it smooth? Can you hear us well? Cetera, it's been it's been good so far. I asked them a little bit earlier, and they said it sounds good. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right. I have two stories tonight. Short and sweet. There's a lot more. I wish I had more time to look more into this. I listened to a couple of video essays, an episode, and read a bunch of material, news articles on these two stories. And I did it all once. I just kind of breezed through it once to get all, the, like, as much, like, the lay of the land. 
and then I'll go through again to get the details. I wasn't able to do that as well as I wanted to, but uh, I'm just saying that because if you want to know more after this, you can search online. But the first one was uh, both of these happened recently. Ooh. So this first one happens in South Carolina, and there is a church that needed renovations. So they contract a company to come and do all of the renovations in the church, internal, external, things with plumbing, new paint job, all of that. Contractors come over and they get to work and they have to go under the church. So they create a hole in the flooring, an entryway, and they find a cavity under the church, almost like a cave, but more so like, I guess that's what a cave is, but over time, like it, the land deteriorated, deteriorated a little bit and there was space enough to kind of like crawl through. It was now like a crawl space. So they go through and they find this. That's dark, bro. Oh, Wait, what don't the? go next. What is that? Uh, okay. okay. The a first time thing, capsule. Hmm. First thing, you ever seen those like dog igloo homes? Yeah. It yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. one of those like on its side or something. Oh, uh, so. I could see that. Okay. So there's a... Made of stone. Stone. It looks like a stone kind of dome, but there's a, a window. Dude, yeah, that's definitely some sort of There's a piece of, of glass, a window that uh, goes into it. You don't see the window? I, yeah, I do, but I didn't know that was a window. I thought it was just like... So they, they crawl up. Do they look in it? And they look inside the window. And this is what they see. What the frick is that? Go to the next one. Oh, no. <gasps> oh hell, dude! Oh. <laughs> Big nope. So for those just listening, it is like nobody's just listening. Well, a future. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a podcast we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot we're repurposing this. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so for those just listening, uh. It's a haunting white face, but it's like distorted. It looks like webs. It looks like you microwaved an egg or something. Ugh. Like a poached egg that turned into a face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inside of this weird window under this church. Yeah. Dude, what is this church doing? <laughs> I don't know. Questions. Oh, I like it. Questions coming it's up. It's probably Con the same church. Bro, maybe. <laughs> this is who they were trying to summon with their seance. Yeah. South Carolina, London. Um, <laughs> Yeah, dude. At that point, if I was one of the contractors, Crawl I'd be backwards. feeling terrified. <laughs> no, dude. They trapped me in there. <gasps> That's what I'm thinking. Oh. oh. I'm on guard. I'm oh, just in case like they're sacrificing your ass to something? Yeah. Yeah. Don't get blood on that thing. That thing Bro, is, I'm going to uh, break the window. Come back to life. Because then the air gets in, kills it. Obviously, you um, can't. Give me a survive. Second. Keep talking. What do you think? Um, dude, uh, I don't know. I would be so terrified. I would want answers. I'd be pissed. I'd be like, who who owned this church? South Carolina, you could conceivably understand or believe that there's pretty old buildings there. Yeah. Yeah. You can bring it back to our normal screen. Bro, it's probably like For now. the mummy. Okay. Like, so I could see that. They they do find a little plaque by the window where you can look in and see this face seeing you. So the little plaque says, Sophia Catherine Nance, 24th of January, 1853, aged 28 years, 6 months, and 14 days. So, looking back into the history, what had happened is where they were at was a graveyard, like in the 1800s. Church was looking for land. 
Graveyard was the only available space. So before they they purchased and started building, they sent a notice out to everybody saying, we're going to be taking this land to build a church. If you have a loved one buried here, we'll help you to re relocate you know their grave elsewhere to an uh, to another graveyard you know so they had this plan and all these families come and they uh they accept they move all the bodies except for one it's this one nobody came for sophia they waited they put out another notice i'm sure they put it in the paper nobody came so the church needing to continue with their plan proceeded with building the church they built it right over her grave and the church is at least 60 70 80 years old now so she just got forgotten she was forgotten back then and then after more 80 forgotten. more years yeah <laughs> even more forgotten uh even god forgot her <laughs> 1996 <laughs> Not sure. I can't remember the exact details. But 1996, they found this coffin underneath. There's a specific name for this type of coffin. Couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure whoever invented that coffin, like why they thought this was a good idea. <laughs> but in 1996, a bunch of kids found, found this uh, underneath playing. Something like that. And... The kids are all curious, <laughs> so they start tapping on the glass. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> and the glass bad idea. cracks. Blah. It's a little crack. They run and they leave. And that was that. Until a couple years ago, the church started getting renovations or needed renovations. So I think it sounds like this is the second time since the church was built that this coffin was discovered. So in 1996, the body was decently preserved. They could see it. And when the glass cracked, that caused a bunch of decay, uh, like the decay process to speed up, which is why we saw what we saw at first. But in 1996, after the kids found it, they had somebody come and take a picture of what the, the body looked like then. And you can, you can bring that up. It's the same. Oh, that's worse. Oh, those are teeth. Those are oh, a bottom jaw, open mouth. Bro, that straight looks up, looks like alien. <laughs> Dude, that looks straight up like a, when they dig up the Urukai from the trees. Oh. <laughs> Burn flesh. Uh, go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the story of... Uh, Sophia. Sophia. Not too much substance to it, but... Uh, I don't know. Thinking of the kids playing hide and go seek it made me think of like Goonies. Oh yeah, and they run into a one eye Willy. Yeah, one eye Willy and uh, Chester Copperpot. Which <laughs> I feel almost disrespectful <laughs> saying this, but uh, this image was posted everywhere online. Like after I searched for this, so you're I found saying it on a bunch of news I didn't outlets. desecrate it. It was already <laughs> desecrated. <laughs> I'm I'm getting to the point, or I'm getting to a. I'm trying to pose a question. When is it, uh, I guess, disrespectful? Because it's like five years ago, Logan Paul was in the suicide forest in Japan. Oh, frick. And he it was like us. the turning point of his career because he showed that. But it's like this. Yeah, What's there the is, difference? Or if you Time? go to a museum and there's a mummy. This oh, is yeah. where exactly. the disrespect started. I've been to South Carolina. There's plenty of acreage to put a damn church there. <laughs> The church came in trying to take the cemetery. Sean's not That's where it. the disrespect started. <laughs> Okay. But I get what you're saying. Like, at what point can you show a dead body? Okay, no, I see. Is that, like, what it boils down to, kind of? Sure. What point is it okay? I don't know. It is. It's weird because there is definitely a point where, like, I don't want to see it. And then there's a point where, like, okay. But there's also definitely a point where if it were me, I'd be like, dude, I don't even care. I'm already dead. I think maybe while it, like, if, if, if the body's still fresh, it's like there's likeness to it. You're like, oh, that could have been anyone, mm. you know? Mm. After they've decayed and they have no face and whatever, it's like, that's not real. Well, that's not a human anymore. They found a, 
a super preserved girl yeah. who was frozen. And from she like looks like she's sleeping. The Ice Age. Yeah. Yeah. She's like a Neanderthal almost. Yeah. And she, so she looks real, but it like doesn't huh. phase me. I think it is the, the knowledge time? and context. T- context and time. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's so weird. That's a good argument. I, I, that was just a question that was going through my mind while I was reading this and seeing all the pictures. I was like, damn, is this disrespectful or not? But anyway. Well, if you're South American news, bro, they show everything. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> there's a whole subreddit dedicated to that. It's called Off-Duty Cop. For some reason, there's way more off-duty cops than regular cops <laughs> in Brazil. <laughs> It runs an off-duty cop. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm running up on fools and gunning them down. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, that was my first one. Okay. Second one comes from Australia. G'day. Fair dinkum. So this one happens on the Hawkesbury River. Oh, the Hawkesbury River. So the Hawkesbury River is uh, home to one of the largest fisheries in that region or state of Australia. Every day, boats are trawling for oysters, fish, um, prawns. Nice. Lots of sea life. Uh, just scraping the bottom of that riverbed floor. So. And? On Thursday, August the 11th, 1994. On this day, Speed. one of the boats doing their everyday routine of trawling. Start reeling in their nets. It's a little heavier than usual. And once in a while, they bring up trash, appliances. So like, oh, it's just one of those. They see this iron construct apparatus caught in the nets. What is that? I've never seen anything like that. Until one of the fishermen points out, in the plastic bags caught on this this iron construct. He says, that sticking out of that bag in that corner, do you guys see that? That looks like a bone. So the fishermen start removing oh. the debris and the plastic bags. What they find terrifies them. They call the cops. Cops show up. And this becomes one of the greatest mysteries in Australia that lasts unsolved for over 20 years. What they found was a man tied to what looked like a crucifix. So. I know who did it. You know who did it? It was all of Australia because they're godless down there. <laughs> Insane. They call this Rack Man. Rack Man? Dude, yeah, this I man being like tied that. to like an iron rack. Uh. So the cops didn't put like a picture of, of the rack itself online. They didn't publish any of that. They, but there are alleged pictures of it. Like while they were on the boat. Like, people from the shore were taking pictures. And this is what, this is one of the pictures. Oh. You see it? Yeah. Not quite your typical cross. Mm -mm. But uh, not much longer later, they put up, like, a drawing of it online uh, or in the paper for people to see. Basically, uh, the body attached to this he was tied to, to the rack with like wires in multiple places. It was one long beam running down from his head to his, to his feet behind him. And almost like a telephone pole, there were like multiple beams going across, um, coming down the whole thing. And then one of the uh, cross beams kind of wrapped around his body as if this rack was made specifically for this man. So he was beyond, or they were beyond uh, recognition. Apparently, there were, like, like I said, there was bone showing. So I don't know how much they could tell from, from his face. We'll pull up the next picture. Oh. So that was their depiction in the paper. A grisly catch. They said, I just noticed that. <laughs> savage. That is savage. Catch of the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. 
that's actually insane. Um, let me see real quick what other uh, pictures I had. I had more. They they uh, did a they had some professional artists come in to do like a artist rendition or rendering of a uh, of what this this person could have looked like, and this is what they came up with. Oh, it's a good thing they tied him and <laughs> threw him in the water, bro. I know who did it himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can, you, can, you can bring it back to us. That so middle one, though. They had, uh, <laughs> they had like five uh, possible, not suspects, what do you call? Uh, Su- suspects? Like possible options. victims? No, uh, yeah, who they think it was. Going through their list of uh, disappear- disappearances, who's gone missing in the last uh, year, two, three years. Uh, this body was in the river for at least six months they found that he was likely dead before they tied him to that rack Mm. uh they found uh injuries on his skull and said this looked like blood force trauma so he likely died there first and then they tied him to the crucifix threw him in the river that seems a little extra especially if he's already dead yeah. Well, if you're trying to get rid of the evidence, throw him in acid. Still, you know? I feel like mm-hmm. or like Breaking Bad in Australia. It's like I, I don't know. It just seems like they went through a ton of effort to like get rid of the body. It yeah. seems a bit extra. To the me. rack itself was too heavy for one man to so to move around. So they said there was multiple people involved in this because that was the weight of the rack alone, not including the man's body. Shoot. So. Sounds like maybe some sort of ritual. Maybe. 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 Uh, they had five, for lack of a better term, because I can't think of one, suspects. They ran through each of them. The first one, the the teeth didn't match. Like the person who actually went missing had like way more messed up teeth or something. And the, his sister was like, that's not his teeth. Uh, second subject. How um, would she know? <laughs> second, uh, second subject uh, who was missing, who they thought it could have been was like four inches shorter than what the mm. skeleton was. Uh, just there were always there was always something that wasn't lining up. They put out a, a reward, hundred thousand dollars. If anybody can identify who who this is correctly, nobody came forward. So Rackman became a mystery and stayed that way for twenty four years. And I think it was 2018. They identified him. Yep. At the end of August 2018, New South Wales. Wales. New South Wales Deputy State Coroner Paul McMahon officially ruled that the mysterious remains belonged to a 37 year old Sydney man and a known gambler, Max Transevsky. And I have a picture of Max here. So Transevsky was last seen by his partner leaving their house in Newton, oh no, Newtown, Sydney, on the 11th of January, 1993. Transevsky was known to travel up to Gold Coast on gambling sprees, uh, so no suspicion was initially raised when he didn't re- uh, return home that day. By the time he was reported missing, family and friends had begun to fear for his safety. Although he was a known gambler, there's no evidence to suggest that there is any connection with any underworld gangs. Transevsky was known to carry some debt due to this gambling addiction, but an exact sum of his debts are unknown. Just before he disappeared in 1993, he withdrew 1800 bucks, uh, which is about 3300 nowadays, uh, which is not unusual for the self-confessed heavy gambler. This leads us to the currently unsolved mystery of who would do this and what could motivate such an unusual method of killing or disposal of a body in this way. Hmm. So... Crazy that you would find out who who it is, but still be left asking more. For real. So. Yeah. I mean, it sounds pretty, it sounds like they wrapped it up pretty neat. It sounds like it could be the gambling. <laughs> Maybe. No way you could tie yourself to that rack, though. <laughs> Put yourself inside the water. Oh, he obviously owed someone money. <laughs> and they were like, all right. I mean, we this can't was, uh, rule out ritual sacrifice, though. It's true. We can't 100%. Yeah. Just, just they were, the, uh, 
I read also that in the 90s, that was like the height of the occult, at least in Australia. And it was rampant in that area. So uh, investigators approached the occult or different hey, uh, occult. sections of <laughs> sectors of the occult. Good day, occult. Question, <laughs> questioning them. And uh, nothing. A lot of people were speculating, but there was no hard evidence against them. I feel like imagine trying to be an occult member and everyone just assuming assumes that you're the murderer, dude. <laughs> this is dirty. Also, it's like how cooperative are the occult? Yeah, <laughs> like no, officer. Like, uh, I didn't do it. Yeah, what is swiper no swiping? It's like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> you got me. Yeah, mm. um, take me to jail. That's freaking crazy. I'm that's Rackman. so happy we got answers. Oh yeah, because I feel like far too many times we're like. And who knows? Left hanging. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I love the theme of both of these for what lies beneath. Mm. Ooh. I fun movie. That, I made that up. It's a fun movie. Harrison Ford. So, hey. I don't know. Quick uh, little part history, part mystery. Oh. Ooh. True crime. Uh, but that's me tonight. Dang. Rackman and Sophia under the church. Thanks, Ooh, dude. Thanks. Yeah. Sweet. To start us off. I have a short story from the Lord, uh, Seth. Hey, let's go. <laughs> All right. This happened several years ago. Seth's wife is out of the house. She's like running errands. Later on, they're going to be going somewhere, so Seth needs to get ready. So he is home alone with his, his son, who is around, around three years old at this time. So his son is playing in their bedroom while he's getting ready. Seth is in the bathroom. He left his son playing with a toy. So his son's in the other room playing with a toy. Seth's in the bathroom. He can hear this toy going off. It has like a button that you press and it makes this loud noise, right? Mm -hmm. Seth's brushing his teeth and it's the normal sound of his son, you know, playing and the sound of the toy. When the sound of the toy is cut off, and it's replaced by a woman's voice. Uh, I don't like that. Seth's brushing his teeth, and he pauses, and he listens. And it's a harsh, robotic voice that's a little bit muffled. And he thinks, oh, my son must have turned on the TV. So he gargles water, spits it out, rinses his toothbrush, puts it back. And he goes into the bedroom, looks at the TV, expecting to see something on. And the TV's off. So he scans the room. He sees his son on one side of the room, staring wide-eyed at the other side of the room where his toy is sitting in the middle of the floor. And he goes, hey, bud, what was that? And without breaking contact, eye contact, his son said, it was a toy. And he's like, what, what happened? Was it? Was it talking? And he said, yes. And this 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 toy doesn't make a talking sound. <laughs> it's not like one it of makes, the button it's like a, sounds. It's like a fire truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. So instantly Seth is like weirded out. Rightfully. Walks over to the toy, picks it up. He said he took the batteries out, put them back in, pressed every button, every combination he could think of, and all he got was beeps and boops. His son said, can I go downstairs and watch my show? And he goes, yeah. Yeah, you can. And let him go downstairs. He said that was weird. He didn't try every combination. <laughs> he tried every combination. <laughs> no, dude. It's like cheat codes on your old, like, PlayStation. <laughs> Gotta unlock the demon lady. But this leads me into the topic I'll be covering tonight. And I'm pretty sure you two are pediophobias, right? Pediophobias? Like, what? afraid of children? <laughs> So, pediophobia is a fear of dolls. Uh, uh, I don't like dolls. I'm not afraid of them. I'm indifferent. It's classified under a broader fear of humanoid figures, or a, a fear of humanoid figures, known as automatonophobia. Jeez, I butchered that. <laughs> and a related puppophobia, which is a fear of puppets. I mean, puppets are kind of... Gross. So, when I say dolls, what comes to your mind? That one place we went to to watch a movie that one night with one of your coworkers, 
and there was an entire room full of porcelain dolls. Yo, shout out Taylor, by Taylor. the way. Taylor, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that reminds me of. Yup. Por- porcelain American dolls. Girl dolls. American Girl dolls. We had one with Sydney. Uh, the monkey with the symbols. Chucky. Annabelle. Were you guys ever scarred by like killer dolls as children? I was several times. Chucky was probably the scariest scenario in the world to me when I was a kid. Really? I was like, that is freaky. And the story behind Chucky is like, they're going to put down a convicted killer and through voodoo or like satanic thing, he, his soul possesses a doll. Whoa. It's, it's like a little bit darker than you think. I don't know. Looking back on it. Uh, I think of voodoo dolls. I think of Kachina dolls. Oh, yeah. Also I, that one uh, Goosebumps doll, dude. Uh, dude, Slappy. Slappy. Yeah, Slappy. yeah dude. And I've told this, I think of Toy Story. Like, Toy Story changed fundamentally my relationship with toys. Because when I was young, I w- in the back of my head, I was like, oh. Yeah, I hell would be like walking out of the room and <laughs> <laughs> trying to catch them. Yeah. Looking at my little Kakamura doll. And they're you all. Know? <laughs> <laughs> this is a coconut tree again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've told this before on pod, but I legitimately, uh, my grandma bought me a, a toy monkey that was like my height. <laughs> It was terrifying as a kid. I like really liked it. Your the, height? Well, how old like, were you? I was uh, eight. Eight? I don't know. Six? Your height? Yeah, I was like this tall, bro. I was That's small. a four foot monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Polynesian, dog. I That's was like huge. <laughs> That's a gorilla. I, okay, whatever. It was close. Like it was long. Its legs were super long. <laughs> oh, like a sock monkey, but yeah, and it's like it. it Hell long. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I left my room one morning, and I remember like needing something, and it was in my way, so I shoved it off the desk, and I grabbed what I wanted. And I walked out, and the thought occurred to me: that thing's gonna strangle you in your sleep. <laughs> so I like my hand on the light. I stopped, and I turned around, and I saw him on the floor, like looking at me. <laughs> I walked over, picked it up, and set it back down, and I was all. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I took off and I left. But I legit was like, dude, if that thing tussles with me in the night, I'm going to struggle. <laughs> Being all nice to your, your dolls. That's funny. So I went down a rabbit hole again of a fear of dolls. And actually the Smithsonian Magazine put out like a long article on it. So I started reading it. And they cited where this fear starts. First of all, they go into the history of dolls. Dolls are as old as time. Dolls are as old as mankind. They found dolls. You can put up the second photo if you want Kalima. this doll they discovered this doll is from <laughs> egypt ancient egypt it's huge it's made of linen stuffed with papyrus that's no normal doll bro that's to control somebody or something <laughs> yeah. bro that's insane uh, you can go back to us uh that's, they, that's abuse that's child <laughs> abuse dude they used to like in pilgrim days they used to make dolls out of corn husks like how terrifying is that they make dolls out of sticks like bundles of sticks it's like they're almost wanting their children to have imaginary friends. They're like, here, have this doll. Give it a personality. Well, it, it's like an innate human thing to kind of have, make a little personage or effigy of mankind and project onto it. I'm sorry. We couldn't afford dolls growing up. And so I never went through this of, you know, creating that that image of a person and giving it a personality or whatever. That's why I have no imagination, bro. <laughs> Uh, they they found a doll. I think it was four thousand years old. I think is the oldest one they currently have. Sheesh! It's a it's a thing as old as time. So what did the Smithsonian? What did they say? Like diving into the fear. So they cited they cited a a really old museum in England, hmm. and in this museum it has amazing curios and artifacts all throughout the museum. And you snake through the museum and you go see. I, I'd imagine like the Egyptian part or you know. Mm-hmm. Throughout time and history, the last room before the exit is completely full of dolls, and they have some of the oldest dolls, some of the most like foreign and far-reaching dolls, porcelain dolls, cracked faces, lining the walls, ceilings, floors, and they have reported over years and years and years of patrons coming through. So many times, people come all the way back out the entrance. And they just make a remark as they come out saying like, oh, I, I didn't like that last room. It gave me a weird <laughs> feeling. But something is like, something is, it transcends like cultures. Like there is a fear of dolls. And and some of the, do you guys have any theories of why that is? What it could be? Not off the top of my head, no. <laughs> no worries. I wonder how far back voodoo goes, like voodoo dolls. Mm. Maybe, yeah. Because if that thing is like an ancient kind of art. 
then I could see fear stemming from that. Mm. Like bad people use this as instruments to hurt us. Mm. So. And maybe like deep down we have that knowledge or something. Maybe yeah. like. I mean, there's, there's like a hered there are hereditary traits. Like they did a study with uh, rats where they put out like some fruit, like strawberries. When they went to go eat the strawberries, they would zap them. They did that over and over and over again. And then like three generations later, they put out the strawberries again and they didn't zap them, but the rats were terrified of the strawberries. So it's like. It gets encoded in the DNA. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. written in, in their being. Mm -hmm. The Smithsonian uh, posits a couple theories as why. And I think it's like pretty primal. One of them being unca Uncanny Valley. Uncanny Valley? Uncanny Valley. Uncanny Valley is when you see something that is pretending or it's like it's supposed to be a human, but there's something off. Mm. And either you... Um, Subconscious. Or consciously can tell that. You're picking it up. Something's reading off yeah. to you. So like video games, you watch a video game and even though it's like so super realistic, there's something about it. You're just like, okay, that's not real. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they say that probably has a huge part to play. So like you're looking at these dolls and it's supposed to be real, but like your brain is like something's off. Yeah. And that just makes it creepy. It's unsettling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A part of it is a, a long word I have a really hard time saying. Am anthropomorphization. It's when you like humanize something. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. you know the teddy bear? Yep. And everyone's like, oh, this lovely teddy bear. Like it's so cute when really bears in real life are like vicious and terrifying, right? For the most part. And so we do this thing where you kind of project on this this thing. So we're, we're doing that to these dolls. And they're saying subconsciously, you know what to expect from a human, but this little like figure, you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And so there's like alarm bells deep inside of you that might be going off. Right. I was traumatized, like I said, from several experiences as a kid. One of them was Chucky. Another one of them was um, Family Matters. When there's a puppet running around killing the family. Oh, yeah, dude. That one was scary, bro. Toy soldiers. To the, yeah, the small the soldiers. Or small soldiers. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And another one was kind of a recovered memory I had today because I clicked on a link. And uh, Kalima, if you want to throw up, it's in my, my notes. And it's called Talky Tina Clip. This scarred me, so I want to hopefully intern. It's an opening. You, in turn, want us to be scarred? I, in turn, want to scar all you listeners. Hopefully this does the, the trick. I recognize that. I recognize that, too. She's alive, Daddy, and her name is Talkie Tina. My name is Talkie Tina, and I love you very much. Will you shut that thing off? My name is Talkie Tina, and I think I could even hate you. No, don't do that! My name is Talkie Tina, and you'll be sorry. Be a good girl, Tina, and eat your supper. Eat your own supper, Christy. <laughs> My name is Talkie Tina, and I'm beginning to hate you. My name is Eric Strader, and I'm going to get rid of you. You wouldn't dare. No? Talkie Tina, and I'm going to kill you. I told well, you. Imagine you seeing this as a kid. I'm going to borrow Tina for a while. Tina belongs to me. How can I live with you after what you've done? You've become a stranger to me, Eric. A sick, neurotic You'll stranger. Die. <laughs> with blind, reasonable hate. <laughs> I saw that and like so many uncovered trauma memories. I was like, oh no. <laughs> but anyway. Bro, homie needs to learn to tuck and roll down those <laughs> stairs, bro. 
Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Like for me, at least, uh, the ideas of tulpas, something you pour energy into, it becomes real. Mm -hmm. Like these children take these dolls and they love them. They pour their energy into them. They they talk to them as if they're a real person. You know what I mean? Like there is a relationship there. Mm -hmm. Some people might think it's nothing. Others might think it has an effect. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know where you two fall on that. But I'm going to cover two quick stories real quick. Recently, I think 2013, a mother in Texas gives her daughter an Elsa toy. Super standard, super popular at the time. Right. All the girls wanted it. Got this toy. This girl loved her Elsa doll and played with it for very normal for six years. It's, it had a very basic button on its chest. You press it and it saying, let it go. That was it. Six years later, maybe not six years later. It might be two years later. <laughs> <laughs> they noticed the doll started alternating between Spanish and English. It's a teaching doll, dude. There was no switch on it. There was no button that kind of indicated to switch languages. It just started going back and forth. Dan, you're fluent in Spanish. Sí. What's up? Sí. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Cómo se dice let it go en español? De hello. De hello. De hello. So that's what they're hearing. Yeah, and they were like, we're not about that. <laughs> They start thinking and they're like, yo, she's been playing with this like every day. Not once have we removed these batteries or replaced them. They start thinking that's kind of weird. They start getting creeped out. They tell dad. They all think about the, yeah, that is weird. Like, why is it just doing that? It doesn't, it seems to be out of nowhere. And so they open the trash. They throw it away. And that's that. <laughs> is, it, is that that? Damn, what a waste. They found like the toy that lasts forever. <laughs> we must destroy infinite power. At least keep the batteries that could power something else forever. You know, you never know. Two weeks later, they're sitting in their living room. One of their kids goes to the, the bench in the living room. It has a compartment in it where they keep toys and he opens it up. And what's lying right on top? Freaking Elsa. Elsa. The Elsa doll. That's weird because we threw it away. Tell mom and dad. Mom calls a family meeting. Hey, I'm not mad. I just want to know, did anyone get this out of the trash? All the kids say no. And her kids are younger. None of them were pranksters. They were like, no. She fully believed them because she's like, none of my kids would have just dug through the trash to get this thing. None of my children would lie to me. Yeah. Also the most misleading question ever from parents. I'm but, not mad. I'm not yeah. mad. But Said like, every mad mom. Bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. <laughs> but regardless, she thinks that's really weird. Someone's pranking us. I don't think it's my kids. It's not her husband. So she posts it on Facebook and she kind of just says, hey, this weird thing happened. We threw this doll away and it came back. This time they pull it out of the trap or they, they have it there and it's no longer talking in English. It's full on Spanish. They take the batteries out and still it's making noise. Now they're creeped out. So the dad takes it into the kitchen and he puts it in a trash bag, ties it tight, as tight as he can, grabs another trash bag and ties it up in another one. Ooh, the double bag. <laughs> Walks out, opens the empty trash can, throws it into the bottom, and then collects all the trash from the house and throws it on top. They document it. They post it on Facebook. They're like, we're getting rid of this thing. This is weird. Puts it out on the curb. Next morning, watches as the garbage truck empties it out, takes it away. Dope. And that's that. They went on a vacation. They were fine. It was out of their minds. It was done. They get home from their vacation. They're unpacking. Their kids are running around when they hear a blood-curdling scream come from the backyard. Drop everything, run down there, go out there, and they see one of their daughters pointing to a nook in the back of their house. Mom comes around the corner. She looks down, and what's sitting there? The Elsa doll. I think I have a photo. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Bro, me too. I put my hands up. Let it go. <laughs> Who is this? 
a lady, a uh, man and a woman from Texas. Listeners? No. This isn't the news. Oh. Damn. Yeah. Um, <sighs> <laughs> it is at this point, before the atmosphere was kind of fun and who's pranking us, how is this happening? It is at this point that the mom said, I started to seriously consider something supernatural was going on. Like something I could not explain what's going on. Right, yeah. I she can't once, explain it. She once again shares it to Facebook. And people, and it's gaining traction and popularity. Because people are, what? This haunted doll is coming back? But the public and the listeners are grilling her. And they're being like, bullshit. This is fake. You're doing it. And she's like, no, I swear we are not doing this. It'd be pretty easy to fake this. But 100%. let's give yeah. her the benefit of the doubt. Let's do that. But yeah, because there two, there's two options. They're faking it or they're not. Yeah. And she is saying... Dude, I am not faking this. Okay, okay. They're like, it's a new doll. So, someone around you is pranking you. That's not the same doll. She's like, I wanted to believe that, but there is, my daughter had drew on her years ago on her arm. The same marker is, is there. That's it's, what I was going to say. the same doll. David Blaine had me sign this doll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, at this point, it is not fun. The girls are scared. Parents are scared. They're like, we don't know what to do. The mom says, and posts this this too to Facebook. She's like, all right, this is what we're going to do. I am mailing this to a willing friend of ours in Minnesota. I'm not putting a return address on it. So if it gets lost in the mail, it gets lost in the mail. But I am not, we're not having this thing. She claims as she put the Elsa doll in the box and put the folds over it and she starts to tape, it plays a recording of a laugh. That lasted for 30 seconds. That she said she had never heard before. She tapes up the box, puts on the address, and ships it to their friend out in Minnesota. Their friend in Minnesota duct tapes this thing to the front of his Jeep. And I have a photo of that. He says, if the doll comes back, if anything weird happens... He plans on welding it into a steel pipe and sinking it in the lake, in a lake in the woods near his house. In Australia to a crucifix. Yeah. <laughs> that doll's big. I didn't realize it in the first picture. That doll's got to be like at least a foot tall. Yeah. It definitely is like larger. It's not a Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> um. The mom is like grilled and kind of ridiculed. People are like, why would you put this trash out? Like, this is fake, right? And she's like, okay, look, either the doll is haunted or some crazy psychopath has dug the doll out of the garbage that was already taken away, broken into my house and property multiple times and put this doll here. I'm going to go with it's haunted or supernatural. In the end, I'm just a mom. I'm a violinist. I'm a wife. I'm a person who doesn't want to be forever known as the haunted doll lady. She's like, I don't <laughs> want that. <laughs> like, I don't. I'm a private person. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be known as haunted doll lady for the rest of my life. I am fascinated by the unknown, though, and the whole experience has been pretty entertaining. But I am extremely happy that the doll is not here anymore, and I hope to God it stays away. And that was the end of the Houston Elsa doll. Nope. Okay, oh, I like that. that's a big one. Let's go over it. What do the What do the news say? They They just kind of covered it. Huh. Uh, shout out the Houston Channel Two News, which I got a lot of that from, and also New York Post did an article on it. <laughs> but uh, what do you guys think? I guess let's go with it's fake or it's real. What's happening? The easy answer is it's fake, mm -hmm. and that she's just looking for. A little bit of clout, dude. Haunted clout. <laughs> Bro, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Let me tell you, you don't want it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to Cast call it when, when we're never going to find the answer. There, there's two, the Smithsonian covered this. There's two classes of thought with dolls. There's like the voodoo doll mm -hmm. where it is a cursed item. Mm -hmm. Someone has put a curse on it and it is meant to hurt. And there is another theory about this relationship with dolls 
is that there are evil spirits who walk among the world. And some of them might view dolls as vessels Mm -hmm. that remind them of either what they think they look like or they see them as a means to an end. And these evil spirits would inhabit these vessels. So there's some evil Elsa looking demon that's just like, yo, this thing is me. Yeah. And jumps right on in. Yeah. I think more plausible than that is just some psycho messing with them. Oh, well. Ugh. That's also terrifying. Yeah. To me, more terrifying. Yeah. yeah. It's like I can fight a doll. You know, how, dude, yeah. You know how killers leave clues like the Zodiac? Mm-hmm. Like maybe this dude was. The Disney princess killer. Definitely going to extreme lengths to get it out of the dumpster truck, though. As as a psycho would. Right, True. right. Yeah. If it is supernatural, though, I probably lean more towards the demon inside <laughs> the doll, though, mm-hmm. versus a voodoo doll. Because, I mean, voodoo doll is totally plausible, but in this situation, I would say not as much. Me too. All right. That leads me to our last and final story for the night. I know it's been a long one. I don't even know if anyone's here still. We got we actually got some comments. In this, in Ooh, the, oh, shit. Got? Yee, yee, what's up? Uh, Kamalani was talking about how um, he would put all his stuffed animals on the bed so none, none of them felt left out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just in case they were alive. <laughs> Dude, good move. Hedge your bets. Smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then BH says that that lady wouldn't lie because she's a violinist. That is a good point. <laughs> no violinist can lie. What, what does that mean? She plays violin. What does that mean? Is What's, that a thing? Obviously, like, she can't lie. What's the connotation? Why? Where does it stem from? It's a joke. I'm just. Where's the joke rooted in? Okay, I don't know. It was when, no. it was, I just. I didn't. I didn't want to be missing out on anything. It was oh, when okay. she was like, "I don't want this. I'm a mom. I am a violinist." I figured it was because she was admitting she was a violinist that she wouldn't be lying on something else. <laughs> yeah, she was like, obviously. <laughs> All right. Um. Last story. (laughs) Just like I'm Mormon, I don't drink. (laughs) Okay. We're going back to 1918. To the land of the rising sun. Oh. Japan. There's a 17-year-old boy named Ikichi Suzuki. I? (laughs) Ikichi has a younger daughter who he loves. Younger daughter? Sorry, younger sister. Thank you. I mean... Ikichi has a younger sister who he loves. Mm -hmm. Her name is Okiku. And out one day, much like DJ, he's like, oh, I want to get Okiku a gift. (laughs) So he goes to this shop and he sees a doll. Beautiful doll. Buys it. Brings it home to Okiku. Instantly, the bond is strong. Okiku sees it, screams, runs over, grabs it. I love it. I love it. From that moment on, inseparable, those two. Wherever Okiku goes, so does this doll. They're so close. In fact, Okiku names the doll Okiku. So little Okiku and little Okiku from that moment on, inseparable. That's strange. Yeah. It's very Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to each, to each their own, I suppose. One morning, they're all having breakfast, the family, and they realize Okiku's not up. So they send brother up to see what's going on. We need to get ready. We need to go to school. Brother walks into Okiku's room to find her in her bed, shivering, sweating. Little Okiku has a fever, and it's bad. They bring mom and dad in. They do everything they can. Whole time, doll Okiku sitting on the bedside table near Real Okiku watching. And unfortunately, the fever kills the daughter and sister Okiku. This wrecks the family. She's so young and she dies from a fever. They are all heartbroken. So much so that they build a shrine and altar in the home to remember her in her room so that they can say prayers to her and pass along messages to her in the afterlife. At the center of this shrine and altar, they place the doll, little Okiku. If you want to pull up a photo. There she is. 
It's an effigy. You're just it's asking an altar. for it. Zoom on the Philippines. Yeah, dude. Everywhere in the Philippines, they had Santo Nino dolls. Oh, so is there one in the background like too? Saint. I like, think it's a Buddha. It's baby Jesus. Or like kid Jesus everywhere. Hmm. All the homes, little shrines in the streets. I saw those when we were walking around the Philippines. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I was like, what the hell? Are these yeah. like fairy homes? What's going on? Yeah. Doll yeah. houses? Weird. They just make them out of like concrete and just make their own little art project. Huh. So this tears the family up. They obviously, it's like a huge impact, a turning point in their family's history. And older brother, it's it was his best friend. So Akichi, no wait, what was his name? Goku. Yeah, Akichi comes into the shrine room, crying. Huh. He's something reminds him of his little sister, and he's he's crying. He's praying, and he's he's saying how much he misses you. He wipes away his his tears, and he looks up at the shrine, and he notices something different. He gets close and he puts his head right up in there because he swears. When I bought this thing, when I gave it to her, her hair only came to her shoulders. And this time, the hair was midway down her back. Freaked out, runs to mom and dad, tells them what he saw. Luckily, they both believe him. And they know this doll because they've seen this doll every day for forever how long. Mm -hmm. They all come in and they see, and it's undeniable. The hair on this doll is longer. Uh Now, this is not a white family. So immediately they're like, the spirit attached to that doll? (laughs) (laughs) And our daughter has like, it's attached itself to this doll. Um. Nothing malevolent happened. It wasn't like an evil or dark thing. They just knew so far. their daughter had attached uh, itself to this doll. Wow. And later in their life, they donated it to Japan's Menenji Temple. Where, till this day, the hair continues to grow. What? And it is currently over 10 inches long. No, dude. What? No, dude. No way. Yes, way. That's not real. <laughs> no way. Uh, yeah. <sighs> they need to get in there and study that or something, bro. <laughs> this like we need to buy that. How much <gasps> do you think they sell it for? So we can twenty yen. It. I don't know. Twenty <laughs> twenty doll hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Grounded. <clears throat> anyway, that's the story of Okiku. And the doll. Mm. Japanese doll. That's kind of sweet. Yeah. Kind of, kind of creepy, kind of kind sweet. Of definitely yeah. creepy. Sweet with a question mark. Yeah. Sweet and sour. <laughs> Dude, what a... What a... Oh, man. I'm trying to think of... What? Something uncanny with, like, a toy that I had or something. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, another reason why you were probably terrified of dolls when you were a kid? Sid. Yeah, dude, they seeked their revenge in Toy Story. Yeah. That was terrifying. I did not want to be Sid. Yeah. Yeah. That was probably the darkest part of Disney ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not when they tried to exterminate the Indians in uh, Pocahontas. <laughs> not when they kill every parent for some reason. It's like every <laughs> Disney princess has one parent. No. <laughs> not when Mufasa died. No. <laughs> it was when those, Sid. those toys. Yeah. It was terrifying. Still crawling under the bed. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Dark. Dude, I know we're wrapping it up, but have y'all been seeing the updates of the indigenous schools? Yeah, yeah dude. Man. I saw Vice covered it. Popped Bro. up on my Instagram. So someone sent us a message today. Let me just share it with you. I think it was Ikaika. Yeah. They have only searched six of 139 residential schools in Canada, and they have already discovered... 1,323 children bodies from That's unmarked so graves. That's so wild. Six out of 139, and they're already at 1,300. That's messed up, dude. It's crazy. We shared it a little while ago, and it's just like. Yeah. Literally, when we shared it, 
Well, it was because it stemmed from uh, the first one that they found. Camp Loops. Camp yeah. Loops. Yeah, school. Camp Loops. But yeah, you shared that story. Uh, we record on Thursdays. And literally that Saturday, one of my really good friends, he's he's part native, uh, was like on a in a on a in a march in Salt Lake City. I saw that. All I, the natives. Wish like, we would have gone that for crazy. that. I had no idea he it, uh, I saw it after the fact. But damn, dude. What do you do? Well, uh, how, like, Native Americans have reparations, right? It depends. It, I think it depends between tribes. It depends between, like, especially Canada and U.S., like, what happened. Uh, I don't know fully. I, I think, okay, do not quote me on this, but off the top, I think there's tax exemption, where it's like they don't need to pay, they don't have to pay taxes. There was small parcels of shitty land gifted. There was the ability to open... Um, Casinos. casinos. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, I'm sure there's probably programs where it's like, if you want to go to school, you could probably go for free. But other than that, I don't know. I don't know. We should look at hella scholarships. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, Hawaiians, I don't think, have reparations. The only thing I know of is an apology letter from Bill Clinton in the 90s. He came out formally stating like the atrocities. Oh, that's cool. That the U.S. committed. <laughs> all right so we're square we just, <laughs> we're we, just, square. we just left him on red i just want to say <laughs> i'm sorry for pearl arbor beef squash we dude. good <laughs> yeah done Damn. anyway wow. there's a million other stories with dolls mm. there's other hauntings i read through a ton and I, there's like one called robert which was a little bastard who like <laughs> Dude, terrorized people. They would like neighbors would see him running in the windows and stuff. Super creepy. <laughs> there is obviously the super famous one, Annabelle right. and the Warrens. I went down and read the history, the true history of Annabelle. It's it's there's a ton. You covered the black crone. Oh, the, the crone. crone. The yeah. crone. Crone was one of my favorite stories that I that I found and shared. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. So it, it's something. It's a theme that comes up a lot, and I had a lot of fun going down that. Bring the heat. Try to find more mm. dolls. We don't cover them enough. I know. Well, yeah, it's a weird. It's a weird. It's a weird subject to me. Uh, and that's that's me tonight. Hell yeah, I'm feeling good. Yeah, boy. This has been fun for the first stream. Our little testing. Uh, it's been good to to connect with people. Um, we'll improve. We have been improving. We've been leveling up. So whoa! Before we leave, just well, let's. Uh, Let's close the episode and then we can talk chat or yeah. talk with chat. Yeah. All okay. Right, sorry. Close it out. Uh, we love you all, man. Thank you so so much. Uh, we're at the point where if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. To be honest, to be frank, we'd be dead. So, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we'll see you next week. Big episode for us. Big episode for you. Uh, join in on the live stream, episode 100. It'll be July 17th. Uh, it's going to be on Saturday. Time to be determined, but you'll see on our socials if you follow us. Put it on your calendar, people. <laughs> yeah, come and hang out. Cool, cool. But uh, yeah, we love you. Uh, and trust your gut and watch your back. Bye. Love you. Be safe. Be careful out there. Goodbye. Okay, see you, folks. Come here. Uh, Ikaika said, bro. <laughs> <laughs> or, that's my bad. Uh, Kamalani said, dang, my niece has that same doll. <laughs> it's definitely the haunted. Elsa one? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd imagine that's the one he was talking about. Uh, Brittany said, hola. Oh, nice. Hola back. Sub homies. Sorry, I'm, I'm scrubbing through. Maybe the doll killed her, trapped her spirit, which is why she. I kind of thought that too. I had a theory of like. I was thinking like, that as well. It was draining her life force. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. Guys, any questions for us? Any closing statements? We're going to wrap this up soon. People threw hearts in. We said thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. This was fun. We only reached out to uh, the people we trust, their opinions. So let us know. We want to know feedback, honestly. Be like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> you could, yeah, be as honest as you want with how it went. Yeah. What we could do better at or how we could make it more enjoyable. Or if we should even continue streaming these live. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Just messing around. <laughs> uh, since it's only the realest of real in here, we've been saving all the Patreon money we've gotten, and we've put it into buying 
mics and headphones for Kalima. We got this new camera, and we're setting up a new studio downstairs. Dude, the new studio is gonna gonna look good. It's still gonna take a little more time to to build it out, but uh, for the most part, it's there. And yeah. uh, we just finished painting the studio. This will be the last time we'll be here recording in my room. And finally, the studio is gonna have its own permanent home. Yeah, this is D-Day's room. His mattress goes right below us, <laughs> and we have to pull it out into the hallway every time we record and pack it all down. Uh, also, we have a returning champion, dude. <sighs> yeah, this is uh, – we're still uh, keeping this on the down low from mostly everybody. So don't say nothing. Except for the realest ones. But we – does Brittany know? I don't think so. I don't know. Ooh. I hope Brittany's still here because she's going to freak. She just met, left a comment. Dude, there's nine watching now. So it's like as we're wrapping up, we're getting <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff we've been working on to upgrade the podcast for us, for the listeners and viewers, and uh, just, I don't know, try to do things a little better. And uh, one thing is we're we're trying to have more guests. So there was a long time where we didn't have any. Yeah. yeah. So and we recently had a couple, and we're gonna have more. And the first one we're gonna have is a return guest. It's Leah Hardy on Skinwalkers. Yeah. Hey. So she's still, I think, our number one most listened to episode. We're super excited to hear from her. That'll be this coming Tuesday. Uh, but we're not gonna re- we're gonna announce it on the live stream on episode one hundred to everyone, and then do like a little social media campaign. And it's gonna come out the the week following episode uh, 100. So yeah, yeah, we're excited. That's she's just such a, a sweetheart. I'm so excited because the first time we recorded with her, we didn't film. Yeah, we didn't grab a photo because we were we were such stupid. <laughs> we were trying dude. to figure things out. <laughs> we're still figuring it out, but we have a lot more figured out now. Yeah. So we're excited to have her back. I just messaged her today. I said, uh, "Recordings in a few days. If you have any, uh, if you have any." Uh, uh, media, material, pictures, videos, articles that can help illustrate your story. Send it to young Kalima here. Hey, yo. And, uh, hey. He'll cue it up during your stories. Brittany said, woohoo. Kamalani said, sick. Uh, Made Ceramics is in chat. She said, I'm, I'm kind of late. Looks great. Sounds great. Doll hair's got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Ten doll hairs. Like two weeks delay for the episode. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, <laughs> just cover Sean's ass <laughs> off, Sean. Yeah, dude. Who? <laughs> 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 what do you say? Uh, how long does it take to send things out? Like the episodes. Usually, what happens is we record on Thursday night. Then it goes through nine days of editing. But it's like. Yeah, we're trying to like, okay, so like there's the first part, it gets cleaned up and, and we put it through some software to clean it all up. Right. So it sounds optimal. Yeah. And then it gets sent to me and I start chopping it up. And that takes me several days because it's very hard for me to find three hours I can sit, three to four hours I can sit down and do it all at once. So I have to like spread it out through a couple of days. So what usually happens is Friday night, I am furiously listening back to our stupid ass jokes, <laughs> trying to figure out what to cut what's super offensive and whatnot and then i just like i I eventually say f it and i just publish it (laughs) so that's kind of the process so it's like a one week delay we used to do it it was like a four day delay and that was rough bro. every week was crunch time so we gave ourselves a little more space which has its pros and cons Yeah. yeah yeah we can't talk about current events as quickly as we would want to but dude we were like yeah not able to breathe so yeah. something had to change Brittany asked how do you guys feel like this went did you like doing this i'm not gonna lie it affected my opener in a good way i think bad i think really? i was conscious that people were listening live huh. and so it wasn't like well, i think flowing. that just kind of at the very beginning we had we started with a little bit of the oh people are actually listening right now and then kind of settled in a little bit yeah i think i can get a little too lax when it's just us so with people watching, I tend to overcompensate for whatever reason because I'm insecure. <laughs> so your insubordination goes down. <laughs> down. Uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I'm uh, excited for more interaction, and we've had yeah. a ton of comments just from our family and friends who we 
like shared this private link to. So yeah, hoping we get, like I said, at least three more people when we make it public. Let's go. I've been, we've been so excited to do this for so long and this is us pulling the trigger. And there's like a ton of things we were like, we wanted to have this dialed in before we did it, but I'm glad we did this. And it will be fun to eventually open this up to like a larger audience. And maybe there is a ton more interaction. You know, And this so. would be a common thing moving forward? Tentatively, we're thinking once a month. Okay. Yeah. We have to figure out some of the kinks that go with it because, I don't know, like... It adds a whole new so many of work. Yeah, so many logistics uh, behind it, like the list of what to do. That's true, yeah. How yeah. to do it. It's like patron stories. Are we going to share that? Yeah, that Is was that actually be public like in the live? future. We would have to do it at the end or something. Yeah. Like do we if just we not were doing share a, patron story live and wait, make the patrons wait till we can get it out to just them? If we were recording live, we would have to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Like right now, pretty much everyone in is a patron anyway. So it's like. Mm -hmm. huh. Dude, Kamalani and Brittany, thank you. Appreciate hey, hey, it. shout yeah. out you guys. Y'all seem so natural at it. I laugh so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, all right. Any last questions for us or anything, any thoughts? I don't know. We're excited. Hopefully, we're trying to push hard before October. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are aware. Love y'all. Good night. Good night, dude. Um, I don't know how many of y'all are aware, but there's $10,000 hidden somewhere right now. There's a huge treasure hunt in Utah. Apparently, all the trails are packed. <laughs> My wife is a part of a hiker's Facebook group, and all of them are like, dude, it is so annoying how packed all these trails are because yep. everyone's out looking for this $10,000. A couple weeks ago, I interviewed at a company. I uh, social media stalked the boss and kind of followed him. And from the podcast, I just followed several people that were connected to him. Started talking with one guy. And in the middle of us talking, I realized, wait, you're the dude who hid the $10,000? And he's like, yep, that's me. I was like, what <laughs> the heck? He, before that, he was like, are you inviting me onto your podcast? Because I like, I reached out to him. And I was like, yeah, like we, we do stories of cultural or folklore, scary stories from around the world. If you have, if that interests you, yeah, we'd love to have you on. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I flip houses and I'm currently flipping a haunted house and I've had experiences. Oof, oof. And then after that, I saw his post about the $10,000 and, and you I was realized like, wait, that are you the $10,000 guy? And he's like, yeah, that's me. And I was like, oh, bro, like we want you to come on. So if we can schedule it, he, he's willing to come on. Sit down. Yeah. That's cool. It'd be interesting. Yeah. But anyway. All right. Any other questions before we leave? Love y'all. Good night. Yeah, I think we're going to sign off. But Flagrant shares theirs every once in a while. I think the entire... What? The entire oh, viewers are we sign. talking about Just like the about patron stories? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, That's like, a good point. We should. We should share one a month. Just be like, okay, this one's going to people. Yeah. Just... uh, We can even like have them vote. Like, which one do you want? Huh. I don't know. Because it's true. Patron or uh, Flagrant does put out a bonus one. I think share every so often, show them what they're missing. Oh, that's a good idea. All right, cool. Happy Friday, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully you have a long weekend. Be safe. Bro, it's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Well, tomorrow's Friday. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying have, like, uh, have a good Friday. Have, for, a Friday. have a good 4th of July weekend. If you don't like support that, then like that's on you. Like You do you, but everyone else, happy 4th of July. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See y'all. We appreciate it. Bye. Love you. Be safe. <laughs> that was very conscious for Kamalani. <laughs>